Blog Talk Radio. You will not be able to stay home, brother. You will not be able to plug in, turn on, and cop out. You will not be able to lose yourself on stag and skip out for beer during commercials because the revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be brought to you by Xerox and four parts without commercial interruptions. The revolution will not show you pictures of Nixon blowing a bugle and leading a charge by John Mitchell, General Abrams, and Spiro Agnew to eat hog moths confiscated from a Harlem sanctuary. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be brought to you by the shape of a war theater and will not star Natalie Woods and Steve McQueen or Bullwinkle and Julia. The revolution will not give your mouth sex appeal. The revolution will not get rid of the nub. The revolution will not make you look five pounds thinner because the revolution will not be televised, brother. There will be no pictures of you and Willie Mae pushing that shopping cart down the block on the dead run or trying to slide that color TV into a stolen ambulance. NBC will not be able to predict the winner at 8.32 on the court from 29 districts. The revolution will not be televised. There will be no pictures of pigs shooting down brothers on the instant replay. There will be no pictures of pigs shooting down brothers on the instant replay. There will be no pictures of Whitney Young being run out of Harlem on the rail with a brand new process. There will be no slow motion or still life of Roy Wilkins strolling through Watts in a red, black, and green liberation jumpsuit that he has been saving for just the proper occasion. Acres, Beverly Hillbillies, and Hooterville Junction will no longer be so damn relevant, and women will not care if Dick finally got down with Jane on Search for Tomorrow, because black people will be in the street looking for a brighter day. The revolution will not be televised. There will be no highlights on the 11 o'clock news and no pictures of Harry Hart, women liberationists, and Jackie Onassis blowing her nose. The theme song will not be written by Jim Webb or Francis Scott Key, nor sung by Glenn Campbell. Tom Jones, Johnny Cash, Engelbert Humperdinck on the rare earth. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be right back after a message about a white tornado, white lightning, or white people. You will not have to worry about a dove in your bedroom, the tiger in your tank, or the giant in your toilet bowl. The revolution will not go better with coke. The revolution will not fight germs that may cause bad breath. The revolution will put you in the driver's seat. The revolution will not be televised, will not be televised, will not be televised, will not be televised. The revolution will be no rerun, brothers. The revolution will be live.
Abosun, Orisha, Loa, Neteru, Aspects of the Divine, Ensamanfo, Shep, Egungum, Ancestors on whose shoulders we stand. Black Notes, Libation, a spiritual offering, a prayer with props to God, to earth with water, fire, air, breath of life of the Creator. Divine presence, wisdom, power, 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 connecting us to ancestors. Queen and Zinga, Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, Kwame and Kuma, Patrice Lumumba, Malcolm X, Stephen Biko, 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 connecting us to ancestors. Struggle to progress, past to present, enlightenment to African cultural, spiritual space, gracing the cosmos. The universe with aspects of the all Encompassing our entire being Singing in harmony with joy In pleasure beyond measure In passion for life Voiced like the song of the river Flowing with the sensual grace of Oshun Oshun, Teheru, Nana Eti Oshun, representing the beautiful the feminine features of life, lightly dancing to a timeless rhythm, in tune with the tone of a spiritual offering, a prayer with props to the highest, down to earth with water, fire, air, breath of life of the Creator, divine presence, wisdom, power, power, power. like the nucleus, the core, black, sweet, black woman. Energy, strength, black, man, energy, complementing, black, woman, energy, unifying, connecting us to ancestors, Martin Luther King, Queen T, Imhotep, Zumbi, David Walker, Nat Turner, Ida B. Wells, Marcus Garvey, Medgar Evers, Fannie Lou Hamer, Fred Hampton, George Jackson, Bob Marley, Peter Taj, John Henry Clark, Fela, Fela, Anikulapo, Kuti, connecting us to ancestors, struggle to progress, past to present, to future, transcending space and time, ancient to future, black notes, libation, and pie, a spiritual donation to creation, creatively opening the way from this day forward for divine. Melody, presence, rhythm, wisdom, word, power. Everybody, I hope you enjoyed that little short introduction. We had Gil Scott and Black Nose Liberation Song. And this is Real Radio Talk. I'm your host, Nigia Sabarak at Kai. We have a guest co host live from Orlando, Florida, Lance Curve Media. You can always find him on YouTube and he's on Facebook, Instagram. Been doing a lot of work there in Orlando, Florida. We have the beautiful, honorable goddess. Riket Kajara Niaya. She is the founder of Ra Seki Hearts Temple. She's the author of 11 published books, including Ra Seki Kemetic Reiki, Level 1 and 2. Speaking with Spirit, Light as a Feather, I Get Energy from the Sun, and many more other names of the books that she has written. Um, Riket Kajara is a Heal Thyself Ambassador of Wellness. She's a medicine woman, a priestess, a community activist, African holistic health consultant, spiritual warrior, sacred woman, educator, mother. She's a tree hugger and nature lover who has dedicated her life to promote health, wellness, and natural living to our community. And, um, you know, I can just go on and on on her biography 
but I'll give her a chance to have some room to introduce herself without me giving you all the goodies all up front. But, yeah, she also has a temple called the Ra Seki Arts Temple. You can find her on Facebook and on the YouTube as well. And it was created to promote health and wellness in our community. She does classes, workshops, videos, consultations, and events. The Ra Seki Kemetic Reiki is an ancient healing modality that has been reactivated again to bring about balance and healing for our community. We share, t- we share tools and techniques to heal the emotional, physical, mental, and spiritual aspects of ourselves. We use all things natural in our healing system. We use crystal therapy, sound therapy, aromatherapy, the power of intention, concentration, focus, symbols, mantras, and other ancient healing techniques in our work. We pray for Ma'at to be restored on earth once again. We work to make it so. The power is in our hands. So this is some of the vibration of this Honorable Empress is bringing to the world there in Orlando, Florida, original from Chicago. And we have her on the switchboard now, and I'm going to open up your mic, Empress, and you're welcome to double introduce yourself because I'm sure I said everything you probably wanted to say. Thanks, you know, thank you for being on Real Radio Talk, and I appreciate your time and your energy. More love to you. Hatapu, greetings, and habari gani to everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you for being here. Well, I am the founder of the Raseki Arts Temple. I am a healer. I consider myself to be a social scientist. And it is part of my purpose to bring light and share healing with our people specifically because we have been through so much trauma. And we talk about that, but we don't really address the healing aspect. So we are Mm -hmm. actually to deal with that part and to, um, we we like to say that we are leaders in the healing movement of our people. Yes, I totally agree. And like I had mentioned um, during your introduction that we have Lance Gerv Media on the line. He's from out of Orlando, Florida. And I wanted to just give him a chance to introduce himself. We also have a Elder Kwame on the airways as well. Um, he's responsible for having Infidishi come to Miami, Florida, and potentially Orlando in the near future. You know, so we have some some powerful energies right now on the the switchboard listening in. And I just want to give them an opportunity if they want to, you know, say something, introduce themselves, or. You know, they just want to listen, and that's fine, too. So we'll deal with Lance Curve Media first, and then we'll move on to to um, Kwame. Maybe Kwame just want to sit back and listen. I don't know. But, um, Lance, I'm going to open up your mic now. Okay, thank you so much. It's an honor to be here, and I don't want to take up much time. This is Lance Curve. Um Of course, it's easy to find me on social media, but it's not about me. It's about the collective energy here And I am honored, and I have to say that I definitely, we all need healing of some sort. And I'm glad to be here to receive this information and to receive it in the gracious manner in which you give it. And I'm just happy to be here. And I really, really, really need what you have to share. So greetings to everyone here, and it's an honor. And thank you so much for the work that you all have put in. Yeah, so um, I'll I'll keep your mic open, Lance, of course. And um, Kwame, I have your mic open now. I don't know if you want to say something or you're just chilling right now. Yes, we just listen right now. Okay, no problem. Well, your mic is still open just in case you want to chime in anytime. So, yes, it's, um, the floor is yours. You know, we, we're going to talk about comedic Reiki 1 and 2, and I think the first thing will be good to let ones know what is comedic Reiki levels one and two, and we can probably talk about some chakras because I know Reiki deals with 
cleaning the chakras and making sure they're spinning in the right direction. So maybe we can just, you know, start from there and then we can talk we can talk more about you being an author because I'm definitely interested in the 11 books that you published. I mean, that's, that number 11 is a power number, one of my favorite numbers. So you, you got my wheel spinning on that. You got my chakra spinning most definitely. And then we can just talk about um, speaking with spirit, give us an idea of what that book would be like if one was to buy it and light as a feather. I get energy from the sun. You know, those are just powerful topics to even talk about in itself and then being a tree hugger the elders always say hug a tree give your problems to the tree the tree absorbs that negative energy and answers your prayers and revitalize you in a metaphysical sense so you know hugging a tree is not it's nothing you know spooky about it or whatever we used to do that when we were children you know sit under the tree or kiss the tree we used to do things that now that as we're adults we think that's weird but it's really not weird so, you know, you can elaborate on those things. Okay, for sure. Um, I guess I will start with the comedic Reiki because we do get a lot of questions. What is the difference between comedic Reiki and the other forms of Reiki? And basically, yeah. comedic Reiki is uh, one of the most original forms. We work to the, to its most original state as much as possible. Reiki itself is a practice that deals with universal energy, which is the Rei part. Of course, refers to one's own personal life force energy. So we call that Sekim. And so Raseki refers, it's another word for Reiki, basically. And it refers to that universal energy of Ra, which we all use on a regular basis and how we can consciously connect with it and use it to enhance and empower our own personal life force. So this is a practice that was done thousands of years ago because people were aware of energy and more sensitive to energy and were masters of their energy. And they were said to have been able to move things without touching them and speak without using their mouths and things of that nature because of the energy that they carried, the ancient ancestors in ancient Egypt, which we also call Kemet. So our practice really is about helping us to learn how to use our energy, how to cultivate it, and how to master it so that we can become more empowered overall. Because currently we're just totally unaware of energy. We don't really talk about it. You know, most people just pay the energy bill. (laughs) But don't really think about their own personal energy. And it's important, you know, that we are aware of this. So our level one class, uh, which we will be doing in Orlando soon, um, it actually deals with the self-healing. And when we deal with our healing, we deal with it in a holistic way. So we are working to heal our physical bodies, but also our minds, our emotions or hearts, as well as our spirits. Because usually when we're physically ill, it is also a a result of other illnesses. So we are you know, emotionally sick and we get physically sick, or we could be spiritually sick and we get physically sick, you know. So if we just deal with the physical issues, then we find that we're not getting a complete healing. We have to also deal with the root cause of the physical issues, which usually is emotional, mental, or spiritual. So in our practice, we deal with all aspects of the self, the mental body, the emotional body, spiritual body, as well as the physical body. And in that way, as I said, it creates a more complete healing. And again, this is stuff that our ancient ancestors knew. You know, they basically practiced to prevent disease, (laughs) which is what we want to do, especially now that we are being bombarded with 
poison in our food, water, and air, um, to say the least. So the level two class actually is a class that is for those who want to help heal others, those who want to really learn how to master their energy and project it and be able to clear people's energy. Of course, one can do it for themselves, but if you have someone else to do it for you, it can be a little bit stronger in some cases. So, um, you know, we offer that as well. And then we do have other levels for those who want to go further with the practice. And basically, our practice, it is a spiritual practice. It is an African-centered practice. So those are the things that really make it very different from other forms of Reiki because we do deal with, you know, the laws of my art. We deal with spirituality and spirit guides and building altars and, you know, dealing with deities and ancestors and all of those things are things that we actually talk about in our classes so that people, you know, know how to do it properly. So I could go on and on, but um, let's see. (laughs) I want to give you a chance to ask any questions before I do um, go further. I know you had a few things on your list you wanted me to talk about. Yeah, so give us the dates that you're going to be in Orlando, you know, just in case ones are in Orlando or live in Florida or maybe in Georgia, cold states here that might want to, you know, attend the workshop. If you want to give some information on that, that would be good. And then. You can talk about um, speaking with spirit, you know. Okay. We will be in Orlando February 24th, and we will be doing Comedic Reiki Level 1. And this is a class that everyone can benefit from. You don't have to be comedic to benefit from Comedic Reiki. Um, And we do have people who take classes who are from different practices because we are open, you know, to everyone. Um, But Comedic Reiki Level 1 is going to be at Three Masks, February 24th. Um, And you can register in advance. In fact, we encourage everyone to register in advance on our website, which is rasekihealing.com. Uh, We also have a few other classes listed, and we are hopefully going to be having a class in Miami very soon. (laughs) We'll be talking about that. That's in the making right now. We'll talk about that off air after the show. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) But Speaking with Spirit is one book that is very precious to me because I also do a lot of healing consultations, and I work with a lot of young people. And um, I would tell young people, you know, you just go pray. You know, you need to pray about that. And I had a few of them to tell me they didn't know how to pray. And I felt that was a problem. And so I was inspired to create this book, Speaking with Spirit, which is a book of African prayers. So it is prayers from ancient Kemet and prayers from West Africa and prayers from other places in the diaspora Um, and then also libations and prayers from people in our own temple. So we just felt like, you know, we needed to have, I don't, I think I've seen this, like, this is the first book of African prayers, just straight, you know, a prayer book that I've seen. And I felt like it was really um, powerful because as I was putting it together, I got to see, you know, how close the West African prayers are to the comedic prayers, like the way that they pray is very Mm -hmm. similar. So similar, uh, yes. mm -hmm, And just having an opportunity to record some of the prayers, like I have a Haitian prayer in the book, which was given to me by one of my teachers, and I just, you know, the ancestors say, you need to put it in the book so it's not forgotten. (laughs) So, um, you know, stuff like that. Um, It it just felt like it was needed to be um, out there 
especially now when people are leaving the churches and are looking to find some options or alternatives. And, you know, I do also get a lot of people who ask, well, what do I do now? You know, I don't want to go to church anymore now that I know this, this, and this. So now what do I do? So that book really is very helpful for anyone who is making that transition and wanting to learn more about um, African traditions and the way that our ancestors spoke to the spirit realm. So um, we do have also a recipe book, Recipes for Elevation. That book has um, recipes which are good for people who are transitioning into eating more healthy and living more healthy. So we know that, um, you know, the products that we buy, even the soap and toothpaste stuff that we're buying for our personal care um, are oftentimes full of chemicals just like the food is. So um, the Recipes for Elevation book has recipes for people who may want to learn how to make your own toothpaste or deodorant or other things which, you know, you can make without the chemicals. Um, of course, we do have recipes for vegan meals, um, raw food dishes, smoothies, teas, tonics, and other things like that as well. Uh, I also have three children's books. So you mentioned two of them, Light as a Feather, is probably our best-selling book overall, and it is The 42 Laws of My Art for Children. And so we translated the laws of Ma'at into a language that children can understand because I am a mother (laughs) and I would use the laws of Ma'at as a form of discipline Mm -hmm. for my children. And so when they got out of hand, sometimes I would just, you know, I had a poster on the wall and just, you must have done the same thing. (laughs) I hear you over there. But, uh, you know, you just Mm -hmm. said, don't read them. My eye. And when they read them, it just really brings them into balance again because it really makes them become more conscious and aware of their behavior. So, um, But I noticed some of the laws they would stumble on because, of course, the language. And so we translated the laws a little bit and made them a little bit more current. So there's one in there that says something like, I would not be a bully. <laughs> which is an issue, you know, and not just in our community, but overall. And so period. You know, mm-hmm. Yes, it really is. And we need to be um, speaking about this to our young people and letting them know that that is not correct behavior, you know, that as well as so many things. So we just felt like that book was important to get out here for the young people and for our future overall. Um, And then we have I Get Energy from the Sun, which is another children's book. And that one, of course, talks about energy. And it is um, all the children's books that we have are like early readers. So they're very good for um, babies. I do have parents who read them to their babies. And then they learn to read using the books is what I'm told. So um, they are written in a language that's pretty easy for young people to read and understand and gives them an alternative to some of the other early readers that they would get in the school system and whatnot because they have pictures of children that look like us. And, of course, we know that is also yeah. very helpful to the self-esteem for the young people to see images that look like themselves when they're reading. Mm-hmm. So um, that's, we also have um, I and Mind, Body, and Spirit, and that is our newest children's book, which, of course, explains different aspects of the self to children so that they can become more aware of themselves. And, of course, I always tie in eating healthy and having good behavior and you know, being loving and things of that nature. So, um, you know, I'm very grateful to the illustrators who drew the pictures. 
um, and very proud because they did such a great job. So, um, of course, you can get those books on Amazon and then also on our website, which is at rasekistore.com. Um, we do have a few more books. Um, a couple of our books uh, we did publish in French. So um, out of that 11, we do have two books in French. We have the Raseki Comedic Reiki Level 1 and 2, and then there is a Level 3 book that we only sell to people who are going through the Level 3 class. And we also have the Segment Rising book, which is a book that is dedicated to the Great Mother and Goddess Segment, who is called the Great Mother Healer and also the Destroyer of Evil. So she is a goddess that is very important in our healing path and work. And this book is um, everything segment. So we have rituals, offerings, stories, prayers. It's a very complete book. It has color pictures. And, um, again, all of the books are available on Amazon as well as our um, RasekiStore.com, and that's R A S E K H I S T O R E. Yeah, it sounds like you have a lot on your plate, and you still have more to share, I'm sure. That is just wonderful, you know, and then dealing with the youth and how you're reaching out to them on a comedic level, I think that's just beyond awesome. That is so nice. So nice. And what yeah, about I get energy from the sun? Because a lot of people are running from the sun. They have the umbrellas. I know that Jehovah Witness on Saturday is like a flock of them, and they all have umbrellas. Oh, you wow. Know, because, they <laughs> because they don't want to be, you know, afflicted yeah, from the nice. sun, or they don't want to get dark-skinned, and I don't know what the problem is, but they have their umbrellas. Yes. And now I'm well, seeing that, that you wrote a book. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. They definitely should get the book. It is one of our children's books, but it does help us to remember, you know, how important the sun is and how the energy from the sun feeds everything on the planet. And uh, really, we should be in tune with it as opposed to hiding from it because. Many people are vitamin D deficient because they don't get enough sun. So, um, you know, and really that's the only way you can get it. You know, that's the only way your body can make it. So we don't want to run from the sun. But I do want to also add um, that we also have a few CDs as well. So if um, we have CDs that have comedic chants, and prayers and guided meditation. Um, we just recently released the segment, The Goddess CD, which has some beautiful songs dedicated to segments. And they have just been um, listed on iTunes and Spotify and Tidal and all of those types of sites, servers, <laughs> music channels. Um, so you all mm-hmm. can look to that segment, The Goddess. We have a prayer on there by Baba Heru, who is Queen of Fua's husband. Um, and it's just a really nice, you know, nice vibe if you want something different to raise the vibration. That is an opportunity for you to listen in. The other CDs that we have are available on Bandcamp, and that's Raseki dot bandcamp dot com and those are the the healing sound CDs yes we have um, we have one with the opening of the way and and the, it also has that chant Neb, which is very popular you might remember that and um it has some guided meditations, 
and the segment mm-hmm. the goddess CD is on there as well, and the, it's the full CD. So there are a few more songs on Bandcamp than there are on Spotify. But um, you know, if you are into some comedic chant and stuff like that guided meditations if a lot of people want to meditate but don't know how or just need some help sometimes so the guided meditations are very helpful because you can just tune in you know turn it on and just listen and follow and it's really really helpful for those who need to relax but need some help in relaxing so those, as I said, are available on that band camp, Raseki dot band camp dot com. So what else do you want to talk about? Or do you have any questions? Oh, I'm sorry. I had the phone on mute and didn't realize it, and I'm asking the question. (laughs) And I had the phone on mute. I'm sorry. Yes, I was asking about the medicine woman. You know, you have some women that's going to the pharmacy, and, you know, they're taking all these different type of medications that's not necessarily helping them or they're getting hysterectomies, you know. So you coming from a more medicinal, holistic point of view, explain the medicine woman because people will see the medicine woman and they probably will be like, oh, she's on some food. So, you know, they'll take it to a whole negative realm. So kind of like well, explain that in a sense. We have to remember that, you know, there are good Christians and bad Christians, good Muslims and bad Muslims, good witches and bad witches, you know, so we can't Mm -hmm. just stigmatize people because of a certain title. A medicine woman is someone who works with roots and herbs and things, but not necessarily in a negative way. And that's why we choose to use, you know, I don't want to call myself a witch because people usually think that is a negative term as well. Medicine woman is more of, um, you know, someone who actually works to help people using the medicine from the earth. And the earth is plentiful in medicine, whether it be herbs or flowers or even crystals. So um, medicine women work with the elements, air, fire, water, and earth. And everything in between, (laughs) basically. Right. Uh, And, you know, when we think about, again, think about our healing, we have to think about it or we want to think about it in a more holistic way because Western medicine gives people pills which help to, you know, stop the pain or, you know, it might stop you from feeling a certain symptom, but they usually create other issues and imbalances within the body so you find over time and we have found that people who take those prescription medications over time usually their kidneys break down because the kidneys cannot continue to try to filter you know all that man-made stuff that they're taking and so you know as opposed to putting yourself through that you may want to explore some alternatives because there are plenty of alternatives when it comes to healing and really you know we take the approach of doing as much as possible so we'll work with energy healing we may suggest um, herbs Uh, we may suggest some fasting and detoxing Um, even exercise you know for a lot of my clients they are very stagnant. And when you're stagnant, it's very easy (laughs) for your body 
to create disease because you're not your blood is not getting circulated, you know, your air is not becoming um, refreshed as it should be. So the body becomes stagnant and then sickness can set in. And people don't realize how just simple changes in lifestyle can um, bring about healing. And the medicine women are the ones who could tell you that. <laughs> you don't have to. Right. Spend- and thousands of dollars to get healed from everything, and nor do you have to take, you know, prescription medications for the rest of your life if you are willing to make some changes in your lifestyle. So um, that is what people really need to know because most people who would call themselves a medicine woman have definitely taken time to study um, different things. To use as medicine, <laughs> so that's why they take that. Title. Oh, I know. Mhm. Yeah, most people just don't understand. I I realize that as well, but it's not a bad or scary thing at all. The people they get scared about the things that they should accept. We just don't realize how. And twisted we are. So the things that we should be open to, we are afraid of. The things that we're afraid of, you know, <laughs> I mean, that, that we're not mm-hmm. afraid of. We should be open to, yeah. <laughs> Other words, yeah. things, you know, so. Like it's, hugging it's, trees. <laughs> we right. don't think hugging trees makes a difference, but it does make a difference. You know, maybe you could elaborate on the tree hugging connected with the medicine women, you know, because medicine women hug trees. <laughs> yes, definitely, because we understand that we can get a build up of energy sometimes. People like myself who work with others, people who do hair, people who work in offices with a lot of people or maybe do social work and service people in some kind of way, they accumulate energy from other people. And if you don't know how to clear it, that energy can become an interference for you. So you could wake up feeling bad, and really you don't have a reason to feel bad. You just feel bad, and it's because somebody else's energy is interfering with you. So when you go and hug a tree, you have an opportunity to allow the tree to clear the other people's energy. In fact, that's one of the best ways (laughs) that clear your energy is to hug a tree and, and ask the tree to take it or you could put your hand on a big, a big black crystal and ask the crystal to take that energy um, or you know do a aura clearing as well to just sweep the energy away from you and these are some of the things that we talk about in that level one class Simple things that you can do to bring yourself into balance, to help clear your aura, to help um, balance your chakras, and things like that. So what are chakras for those who are just hearing this new term of chakras? You know, what are chakras? Chakras are our concentrated energy centers. So we have energy that moves within us all the time. And there are certain areas in our body that are like these energy centers, like the control centers for energy. So the seven energy, major energy centers that we have um, are located along the spine. And then, of course, where the six are along the spine, and then there's the one at the top of the head. So um, the chakras, they basically are associated with the organs and the glands that are in the areas around them, and they're also associated with planets and the deities that rule the planets and feelings and senses and, (laughs) you know, how everything is connected. So the more you know about them, the more you can really see um, they are and how deep the connections 
with the chakras are to our lives. But overall, you know, that is that is one of the things that we want to become more aware of because when our chakras are out of balance, then we can become sick. And if we know how to balance the chakras, then we can heal ourselves um, pretty easily, um, even from other, you know, from serious diseases. So um, that is something that, we used to be more aware of in, in ancient times. And then over time, of course, you know, these types of things were just not taught to the average person. But everyone should know about their chakras. Everyone should know how to keep them balanced and what they're associated with so that they can keep them balanced. And probably if we, you know, had that going on, we would have less disease and probably less problems in our lives overall because if people were working to keep their energy straight, you know, they wouldn't be snapping out and acting so crazy all the time. <laughs> if people really understood right, the science that's true. of their bodies. Yeah, really. You know, if they understood the science of their bodies, you know, how energy, how karma works and universal laws work and all of those things. You know, I think people would behave a lot more differently overall. Mm-hmm. Is there any information on, on, oh, sorry, go ahead, um, Lance. You can ask some questions now. Oh, I'm quiet. <laughs> oh, no, 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 it's okay. I'm, I'm truly enjoying this, and I need this. And it, it, it's really bringing to light, as I look at it on a personal level, because I drive a bus here in Orlando, Florida also, and I'm dealing with the public the energies that are attached to me. There, there are people who come on my bus on a regular basis who have certain issues and they may have certain issues with me from a distance. And I understand how that works because I know a lot of things try to attach themselves to me in public. I, I deal with thousands and thousands of people every day and I have to make sure to protect myself. But just off the top of your head, what would you suggest one do? And all the things that you said are excellent, but for one who is starting out, you know, when we start out things, we start out in baby steps. What would you suggest to a person um, to do? One simple thing that would help them to go successfully down the road of cleaning their energies on a daily basis. Okay, that is a good question. And I would say, ooh, that's hard to pick one. Um, but I know. I, I know it's multifaceted. <laughs> It really is. But <laughs> the grandmothers I understand. were known to um, sweep it, their I made energy. the important one would help. Right. There and are I, few. And, and just let me know, I don't know if I have a lot of background noise, but I'm going to mute myself while you talk just in yeah, case there's any did background did noise. That, it kind of pops through. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to mute myself. so that. But I'm still here, though. But continue on. Thank you. Okay, okay no problem. So I was going to say, I think probably knowing how to sweep your aura, because I remember hearing the grandmamas talk about clearing themselves before they go to sleep. And I know a lot of people have a hard time going to sleep because they don't clear themselves. They just don't know, you know, what it is. But you can sweep your aura with your hands and really you just Start at the top of your head and just move down the front of your body in a sweeping motion. And you want to grab that stuff that you're clearing off of you and throw it out of the window. Don't just sweep it in the floor because then it'll just be in the floor. And then sweep down the back of your body. And then go under your arms and go under your feet. And you can put some Florida water or rose oil or frankincense oil on your hands before you do it. If you have that option, if you have it around, if not, you can use your hands. It'll still work with your intention that you are clearing away anything that is not yours. You're clearing away stuff that does not belong to you. You're clearing away stuff that does not serve you. And you want to do that about three times. 
for the full effect. And you should feel a little lighter even after you do it. But if you do that uh, on a daily basis or a regular basis, it will help to keep your aura clear and clean. And then the other thing, I just have to mention at least one more. <laughs> well, for those people like no yourself, you drive the bus, you meet in a lot of people, a lot of people are coming around you, you really need to wear or have some crystals around you as well because you would be surprised yeah. mm-hmm. at how much they really do benefit when you're wearing them. So I would mm-hmm. suggest you to wear a clear quartz crystal, which will help you to stay positive. Or I'll write that down. Yes, <laughs> very good. Then you can also put a black stone in your pocket. And the black stones help to absorb negative energy. So that would help to balance out that clear quartz as well. And the black stones are tourmaline, jet, obsidian, shungite is another good one. Um, But they are really good to have around when you're dealing with a lot, a lot of people. Um, And keeping that aura. Just keep your aura clear, bruh. You might want to get you a little spray for the bus. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You got to neutralize <laughs> it. For so many reasons. <laughs> neutralize your exactly. stand. Because I'm telling and I want to you, add in some too, heavy stuff there. Yeah, yeah, because there's some, there's some people with real issues. And let me just tell you, on a on an abstract level, I'm going to explain it like this. It's like they have this baggage, and when they see you or feel you when they get around you, they want to dump it off on you. They want to pull you into that energy field that they possess and don't want to do their own homework in to get rid of. So they're looking for dumping grounds. They're looking for friendly people. Uh, they're looking for people like myself who have to deal with them. If they ask me a quick question about a direction or something technical that they already know, but they're only trying to cause a conflict, it's really, really heavy stuff. And um, I, I appreciate what you're sharing because really and truly, it, it has affected me, although I've done an excellent job of my own. I began to research and, and, and go along the lines of what you're telling me, and I will be there when you're here on the 24th, and hopefully I can get to sit down with you in person um, to promote this type of thing, because this is the next dimension. The thing is, is that we go to the spa, we eat so well, and I'm, I'm a strict vegan, and um, I'm, I'm been lacking on my exercise that I have to do, but you know, I feel the elevation, but I know that there's so much more. And it, it seems as though when you are a person to walk in this manner and seek the knowledge to go higher and, and clear your, your aura, people say, oh, there's an empty spot over there. I could dump on him. You see what I mean? So also what compounds it is that on social media, I'm kind of well-known here in this town. So they get a chance to see me on social media, get envious or get vindictive over something that I said and come on my bus and it's like you don't know what's coming at you when you have those two dynamics working together. So I have to really plug up the leaks and seal up the cracks. Thank you. You are very welcome. And I will be more than happy to have a private conversation with you as well because I could probably, (laughs) since you gave me all that extra information, I could probably add a few things for you personally. Yes. So, yes. Um, I definitely, definitely need that. I'm looking forward to it. Wonderful, wonderful. And I would love for you to promote the class as well because we want to have a nice full class when I come to Florida. This is our first time coming to do a class in Florida. And we've been teaching <laughs> for sure 10 years. <laughs> so we've been all over the country and the class is in Florida. We just didn't have the right connections to make it happen. So we're looking forward to making it happen this time around. I'd be glad to. I'd be glad to because for me, I'm just going to keep it real. It seems like in different areas of each state and different areas in the state, we have bubbles and pockets of people who are more aware than others. I'm not saying if you're in a certain area, you're relegated to ignorance. I'm just saying that the decadence that has swept over the land and all the hard work that those who try to oppress us have done, we have to help to rip the people away from and not aggressively do so because they're going to clutch on to what they know because anything that 
concerns all of the topics and, and, and subjects that you're speaking on, they're going to look at you funny. And I know that you've experienced that. So that's, that's just their ignorance. So we have to promote these type of things and show the practicality of it and break it down. And still, they will have resistance and embracing it. And it's sad that it will take them a near disaster with their health or their mental health or their spiritual health for them to reach around and say, hey, say, hey you know what? This old stuff hasn't been working. Let me try this. And when they do, they usually go hard because it, it works. And I know it does. Yes, yes, it does. Of course it does. It is the next level for us because our people are not used to hearing about Reiki and crystals and that type of thing. And I have noticed the same thing. You know, there's a lot of teachers and healers in certain areas, and you can see the difference in the people, in the level of consciousness overall based on the amount of teachers that they have there. So, and the, uh, you know, just the, I will give you an example. I'm from Chicago, which is the home base of the uh, Nation of Islam. So if you walk around Chicago with a head wrap on, everybody says assalamu alaikum to you, even bums on the street. Right. <laughs> Because and and, and don't is, don't walk down Story Avenue like that. <laughs> yes, I've been you know, up there. I, I know. I've been all the the whole time. So you know that is because that's the level of consciousness there. And if you go on one right. side of town, they say shalom. You know because the Hebrew Israelites are there. So really, you know, right. having the organization set their bases up really has helped in certain areas. And then with it not happening in the South overall, um, you know, Atlanta, I'm in Atlanta now, and it is a hub for healers, but the average person from Atlanta does not greet you with an African greeting. <laughs> right, they are right. Still, oh, my goodness. So it's, it's, a, it's a huge disconnect in the South is what I've noticed. Um, because Indeed. of the strong Christian influence and the, you know, the Bible Belt. So <laughs> I don't know it's how long to be it's going to take to get those people to not only, wake up, change. But not I only know that, there's all kind of weird spirits out here. Trust me. Yeah, yeah, yep. So it's a lot it's all more. All kind of out here. Mm-hmm. But I think that requires, you know, for the teachers to come because there are so right. many black people here who are unconscious and who need to be awakened. And, you know, I, I brought that word up, conscious, and that is a whole conversation in itself. You know, we've been talking about our so-called conscious community and the um, hmm, the lack of consciousness that we seem to have in the community, but I really, and one of my elders um, really said it best, is because we have to heal. You know, we may be conscious of certain knowledge. We may have no learned certain things about how to eat right or about our history or even about our spirituality, but if we have not taken the time to heal ourselves on a personal level, then we still have issues in our relations with people, in our dealings. And so we have all these organizations that have failed to build, <laughs> you know, because they, the healing aspect is not present. So, you know, really we want to get more people um, conscious of their healing and not just healing the body, but we have to heal our mind because we have been programmed to a point that we are completely turned around um, from where we came from. You know, like when I was growing up, if you dated your girlfriend's boyfriend, 
you were ostracized. Like nobody did that. And now Oh, tell me about it. Exactly. About like who that? does that and why? <laughs> if they do do it. <laughs> Let me tell you something. That. Let me tell you something. That's long after, you, always long after you break up with that person, you're not supposed to be with that person. So, no. You know, all kind of names and the way that these young people are looking at themselves, it just, you know, the, the job of the oppressor has been complete. That's why they tore the project down, because the project is over. <laughs> right. They did. Wow. They did. They have accomplished the goal of making us hate ourselves so much that we don't even want to look like ourselves. Like the average black woman don't even look like a black woman anymore. She looks, you don't, you have to question it because the fake hair and the eyelashes and all these other things. So... Exactly. You know, I hear my job of healing. I don't know how many years it's going to take us to heal from the everything that we've gone through, the genocide, the oppression, the racism, all of these things we have to heal from. And we won't see true building until that happens. We have to heal from the crack devastation still because that caused our community to not trust each other anymore. It caused us to have no limits. Yes. So the young people now do anything. Anything goes. They can love anybody. They can do anything. That's their mindset. And that is a complete, that's chaos. That's completely opposite mm-hmm. of my eyes. That's right. So <laughs> I sit here like, you know, I'm, I'm doing this. I feel like I'm just chipping away at a, a huge mountain that has to be torn down and it's the mountain that we that has been created in our minds and in our hearts the people are more interested in beyonce than you know <laughs> they <only> it's the <laughs> healing <laughs> yeah you know what I'm they'd rather be <laughs> looking at beyonce than crystal healing or paying more attention to their children and what's for homework oh. what's the next project you need to do for school they, they don't even care about that. It's just all about the height. The, the strippers have become the, the role models for the young girls. An uh, actual stripper. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's how sick we are. Oh, it's true. Well, let me see uh, if um, caller 913-499 would like to say something, because they've been on, on the line since we started, and I don't want them to forget that they're – I don't want them to think that I forgot they were on the switchboard. So nine one three four nine nine. I'm going to open up your mic if you want to say something to to the guests or myself, Brother Lance. The airways is open for you. Hello, can you hear 913? me? Nine one three. Yes, we hear you, sis. How you doing? Hi, I am so excited. I actually did not press to be called upon, but I'm excited. Because I actually, I just read um, the Rafiki Healing Level 1 book, Mm -hmm. and it has literally changed my life. It's connected so many dots um, and answered so many questions I had. Um, I really didn't know much about chakras at all, but I did, over the years, start noticing a pattern um, in my emotional and behavioral state. and it, it just kind of correlated directly with where I was spiritually, but I wasn't able to determine, you know, how to get back in balance. I knew there was a correlation, um, but I never could quite get far enough to understand how I could get things back in order to realign. Um, what I love, and I have to say this, and I, I won't talk too much, I have to say I love that the book provides not just, information regarding the chakras, crystals, um, but foods. I've only been vegan um, for a short time, and knowing how to eat in a color-coded fashion that keeps me balanced was the missing ingredient for me. Um, I was doing a lot of the ritual work, but um, I find now that 
my body has really done a lot of healing, but my mind, um, the conditioning that you were just talking about, they're going to require um, very focused, uh, a very focused change in the way I eat, not just vegan, but aligning those chakras, um, paying attention to, to my emotions and my behavior. So, sorry, that was a lot. <laughs> I just wanted to praise the book and say I'm no, looking forward to purchasing it. Please go. <laughs> right, CQ Level 2, um, it has just been a blessing. And I teach a um, rites of passage, a uh, and it's called Coconut Fire Sisterhood. We're on Facebook. And I will say uh, the number one handout that the ladies in my group loved um, was me creating a chart that addressed, you know, the chakras, the different crystals, um, the foods, and then uh, the emotions linked to those chakras. So, uh, you know, I probably handed out 30 different handouts in a 14-week course, and by far and large, the most popular one, which was inspired by uh, the Rafiki uh, Level 1 book that I read, um, was that chart. The women were like, my emotions are all over the place. Um, so I just want to say thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart, the work that you're doing. And you've been doing it for so long, I haven't known you very long. Um, it's transformational. I gave, I've gave, given that chart to my children. Uh, my son is having an emotional moment right now. And um, it, I feel so much more in control when I can say, Son, you know, this crystal will help align. These foods will help align. You're exhibiting these particular emotions and behaviors. Um, I think sometimes as parents, we just don't know what to do. So when people like you step up with valuable information, it helps us as parents to, to kind of get back in control of the situation and not feel overwhelmed, especially when you have several children. Um, so just thank you for me, for my family, from the ladies. Um, in, in our circle, Coconut Fire Sisterhood, um, for, for the work that you're doing. It is making a difference. One last thing I'm going to say, I love the song at the beginning. I'm excited that you guys started the broadcast, but I was, like, all into worship and forgot that I was in, <laughs> had long enough for the broadcast. <laughs> cause I was Which one? My own <laughs> the very first one, Oshun. Oh, Oshun. Oh, okay, I was, actually, I played but, two. So the first one was I only the heard that guy. one. The Revolutionary oh, okay. will not be televised. And then I played the oh, Black okay. Liberation song with Oshun. So I guess you came in oh, on Oshun, right? I came in at Oshun, and I'm telling you, when you guys came on, I was awakening from a trance. I was like, oh, yeah, this is a broadcast. <laughs> I completely forgot <laughs> because the music, it, it just it, it lifted my spirit, and um, I needed it. I needed it. I needed it. I needed it. Um, I have oh, I've so been I'm dealing happy with that spiritual I'm able to feel that. Oh, mm-hmm. I, I, I needed that, and sometimes people forget that Het Haru that she actually does have a fiery side, that she does have a fierce side. So I just love yeah. that you know the song, you know it just attributed all of the different characteristics that I think people overlook regarding her. They just oh she's beautiful and she's nice. <laughs> that's why like, she's beautiful and she's nice. That's what you hear. And that's and someone it. Might yeah, tell them no fire with her. <laughs> right, right. That's that's all you ever hear. But um everything that's been said in this broadcast is so comprehensive in the sense that there's so much we don't know, uh, but there's there's so much inf- information available that we can know if we just, you know, tune in to, you know, medicine women like Sister Kajara that and I hate I didn't Medicine women just not, you know, that's not enough. I probably have to say like five sentences to feel like I've covered, you know, <laughs> all of the titles that she is due. But nonetheless, um, so I worship you and I love you from the bottom of my heart. I just say thank you and I look Aww. forward to reading the rest of she your She is book. a love light. <laughs> she is definitely a love yes, light. She is. I'm so yes, happy that is. the Instagram and I, I'm loving put the light. me on her path. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you know, and I'm happy that the Instagram put me on her path because nothing happens by an accident. It was just strictly divine order. Nothing but the ancestors aligning me with the like minds love light, you know, and light attracts light. So you are a light that attracted to her light, and, you know, and, and it's all good. 
It's all good. I yeah. feel you, sis. You know, she's definitely a magnet that you would like to be attracted to, definitely. Yes, yes, yes. Thank so thank you. you uh, thank you so much. I thank you so much for your words. It's always so good to hear from someone who reads the books and who like, likes them, appreciates them. So, you know, thank you so much for sharing. Oh, yeah. I had a whole notebook of uh, little notes because <laughs> I was reading through. So I think I wrote another book while I was trying to absorb the information in your book. <laughs> That's so well, you can right. share That's your notes cool. online. It's okay. We're here. <laughs> if you want to share some of your notes, that's why we're on the radio. <laughs> right, right. Well, I, I would just, I would say probably, like I said, the notes that stood out to me um, were just being able to pinpoint your emotions. You know, I learned from reading Rise Sticky Level 1 to stop, pay attention to my emotions. You know, see where that falls um, as it relates to which chakra and deal with it. Don't let it fester and then at the end of the day, it's like, man, this day was horrible, this went wrong and that went wrong. And that's what I would do because I wasn't paying attention to these subtle shifts in my emotions. But you can nip it in the butt, like right then and right there, you know, with very Mm. simple, and she gives little simple techniques that you can do. It only takes two seconds. Just, just stop. Keep yourself. Just stop, you know. And, you know, eat this food. Just stop. And we're not taught to do that. But that is how we live a balanced life. And I'm happier because of it. I say, I say. <laughs> you never know the effect you have on people, sis. You just never could tell. <laughs> you never could tell the effect that you have on people. And she is definitely... A a testimony for you You know she's basically your voice right now Because We're listening and She's getting giving us a personal experience That we didn't We don't have yet Right You know and it's it's just My cup is running over My cup running over Julie mercy and goodness You know (laughs) Well I'm just glad to hear That you are sharing it with your children and the other sisters and everyone is learning because it is so important and you just really you know gave it all you know being able to get a grip on your emotions so that you are not controlled by the emotions and just not staying in your feelings that is healing that is so huge so you just really did a lot for me tonight <laughs> calling it Right, right. Well, well I just want to say, hey. and I got to meet you. I got to meet you. Um, you may not remember me. I met you at the complimentarity conference in Atlanta. Um, I literally drove all the way there, all the way back um, in like 48 okay. hours. Um, but I just felt um, drawn to go. And it's funny, of all the people on Facebook that, I ha- that I'm friends with, you're the one that I met. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, I just remember walking away feeling at peace. Your voice just, it, it's almost like a lullaby. That sounds horrible, but it's, it, it, it just calms my spirit. And I, I drove back. It's like a 13-hour drive back home. So I drove 13 hours there, 13 hours back, and, I, you know, I was just there literally at, um, that one day. I didn't even spend the night. I was there that one day. But I, I drove back home um, with with the sound of your voice in my mind, um, just really soothing me, and um, it, that's what prompted me to end up buying the Rasiki Level One. Because I'm like, if she can talk to me, and I can feel like this, right? <laughs> then mm-hmm. maybe I should buy some of these books. <laughs> right, something and, tangible uh, that you can have with you every day. That's right. That's and that's, so. That's what I was thinking. I was like, "Well, I'm not too smart, but I, I think if she can make me feel like this in a little brief conversation, that we might be on to something." And um, I'm just uh, see, I'll cry, so I'm not gonna cry. You gotta hurry up and cut me off, put off the mic, because <laughs> uh, I'll start crying um, out of sheer gratitude. Um, yeah, we as black women go through so much. We go through so much. 
And uh, society would have us to believe that we don't have sisters that have woo. our back. That every sister mm-hmm. is trying to stab us in the back and doesn't you know, doesn't have yes. our best interests at heart. But I'm gonna tell uh-huh. you that's not true. Um, Sister Kajar, she has hugged me and healed me from afar. And I know I have a sister in her, right? And that speaks volumes. That's how we heal families. That's how we heal communities. That's how we heal our nation. Everybody doesn't have to come to somebody's house, sit down, you know, and they don't have to lay hands on you. But when we're really, really sincere and we're really, really committed, like Sister Kajara, you can heal and and not even be there. <laughs> not even be there. That's true. But you have that power because you're committed and you're disciplined and you've done the work that people like me still need to do. But she's done so much work, guess what? I get a head start. And that's a beautiful thing. Uh-huh. Yes, it beautiful. is. Mm-hmm. And she's going to be in Orlando on February 24th. I don't know if you could make that journey, but it would be nice yeah, to I'm, have your light in the house. I know. I can only go places I can drive because <laughs> I don't have airfare money yet. <laughs> Hopefully. Hold on. If I keep well, doing these meditations, Orlando, I, I right? can get a, Huh? You could drive to Orlando, right? Or I could go a I'm bus. A, no, I'm in Kansas City. Oh wow! Yeah, I'm a I'm a long way away, but this is this is what I, yeah, but I believe. Yeah, but Megabus drives and the Grey wait the Megabus and the Greyhound leaves from Kansas City to Orlando. Really? Oh, yeah. I didn't think about that. <laughs> okay, oh yeah, so you don't even have to drive. Okay, and I you didn't don't have to take a that. flight if you don't want to do the flight. That Kansas. that may actually be in okay, I'll have to I'll have to look on Facebook. What are the dates again? We'll be in in Orlando February twenty fourth. Okay. And okay. Encourage you to check our website and just figure out where is the closest place. We will be going to Chicago probably in May. And now, I know Chicago we is only eight hours, and I can do that with my eyes closed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, I can uh, do that with Columbus. my eyes closed. We'll be in Columbus, Ohio in April. And that's not very far either. And um, L.A. in April as well. So um, definitely I would encourage you to check the schedule because – we would love to see you again and for you to take the <laughs> class because there are some things that I share in the class that's not in the book. And I can uh, only imagine. <laughs> I can only imagine. And I'm and my name is Akosia, so I'm governed uh, by S E. So so many things that you discuss in the book about healing. I mean, they really, really, really um, hit home with me um, as it relates to my uh, divine purpose. And so that is why, you know, I committed. I definitely want to go through um, level one, two, and three, um, not just out of a desire to learn, but out of a calling, you know, and a desire to fulfill my divine purpose. All right. Wonderful. Well, you have to make sure to sign up on our uh, email list. So that you can okay. stay connected with everything that's happening, just go to the website and you can sign up on the uh, mailing list on either website, the Rasecki Healing or Rasecki Store. And okay. um, I know we're going to make that happen for you. We, we definitely it. are. And so when you see me, I'm probably going to end up sending an email or something like that. I'm one of your thousands of fans, but my name is a closely I able. So if you, okay. if you see that name, it's me. Your sister that loves you um, dearly. And I love you, too, so much. Thank you so much, my sister. I look forward to seeing you and working with you. Okay. That is so special. Thank you. That's really special. And you know what? Since we have her on the line and she was feeling the, the 
Black Nose Liberation song. Let's take a little break and play the song for her again, just to keep her hey, cup right up. Now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. shoulders we stand black notes libation a spiritual offering a prayer with props to god to earth with water fire air breath of life of the creator divine presence wisdom power 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 connecting us to ancestors queen and zinga harriet tubman sojourner truth Kwame Nkuma, Patrice Lumumba, Malcolm X, Stephen Biko. Biko. Connecting us to ancestors, struggle to progress, past to present, enlightenment to African cultural spiritual space, gracing the cosmos, the universe with aspects of the all, encompassing our entire being, singing in harmony with joy, in pleasure, beyond measure, in passion for life, voiced like the song of the river, flowing with the sensual grace of Oshun. Oshun, Teheru, Nana Eti, Oshun, representing the beautiful, the feminine features of life, lightly dancing to a timeless rhythm, in tune with the tone of a spiritual offering, a prayer with props to the highest, down to earth with water, fire, air, breath of life of the creator, divine presence, wisdom, power, power, like the nucleus, the core, black, sweet, black, woman, energy, strength, black, man, energy, complementing, black, woman, energy, Unifying, connecting us to ancestors. Martin Luther King, Queen T, M Hotel, Zumbi, David Walker, Nat Turner, Ida B. Wells, Marcus Garvey, Mega Evers, Fannie Lou Hamer, Fred Hampton, George Jackson, Bob Marley, Peter Todd, John Henry Clark, Fela, Fela, Ani Kulapo, Kuti. Connecting us to ancestors. Struggle to progress, past to present, to future, transcending space and time, ancient to future, black notes, libation, and pie, a spiritual donation to creation, creatively opening the way, 
from this day forward for divine melody, presence, rhythm, wisdom, word. Liberation song. It always brings uh, tranquility and clarity to me, anyway. I don't know about anybody else that's listening, but that's something that you can play every morning before you leave your home or before you go to sleep. And it's just an inspiration all over again. Yes, so. yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> we have another call on the switchboard, uh, 314-312. I'm going to open your mic. Maybe you would like to say something because you've been waiting patiently. 314-312, your mic is open. Yes, uh, sister and the guest, greetings to you. Greetings this to you. Is Thank you Gaya. This is Sibogaya. Okay, Gaya. how you doing, my sis? How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing very well, and I just happened to be online and saw the radio show pop up, and I was like, let me get a hold of this show real quick. Yes. And um, yes, yes. actually, <laughs> I just wanted to let you know that I was uh, here listening and uh, wanted to uh, see if I could get a hold of that sister that's in Kansas City because I live in St. Louis if she's coming this way. Mm-hmm. To Chicago. Okay, no problem. Um, three one, well, not three one. Sorry, nine one three four nine nine. We have someone inquiring to link up with you. Oh, baby, I'll be happy to pick you up. Okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> I ha- I have to go through so Saint Louis to get numbers. to Chicago. Yes. Yes, I have to go through Saint Louis anyway, so I would be, I would love the company. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I will. Uh, I don't know well, I, how to. Let me give. Let me just say my name: Akosua, A K O S U A, and last name is Aibo, A A E B O. So A K O S U A, last name is A A E B O. You can just hit me up on Facebook and thank you, because um, it, it'll be good to have some company. And thank you for opening the line again. I appreciate that. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. So, oh, so I, like I need to, to be a part. Know of, I need um, to be a part of that event too. We got some connections going on here. This sounds like that's something that's getting cool. ready to happen. <laughs> we got to get that date set so we can get that mm-hmm. class going. <laughs> you oh, all got and, this. and um, sister and the guest, um, I wanted to give my essays to the brother that was on there because he was asking some Other deep land? questions. Oh, yeah, that's Lynn Scurve Media from out of Orlando, Florida, um, okay. Jamaican background from New York, too. And he's always, every time I'm on air, he's there linking in his, his media program with my program. And, you know, he's like a brother from another mother type of energy there. And I just <laughs> love him like cooked food. I Thank met his so wife. Much. I met his brother-in-law. The family is Irie. So, yes, I'll let Lance talk now. Because I'll keep going, so I'll let him talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It's one big family thing here. I'm enjoying the flow. I love to see us unify. I love to see us walk in the same spirit because, as we know, that's not what's projected on these other media platforms out here. And we have to focus on that. We have to give each other unconditional love. Yes, of course, we have to watch our backs because we have many who will come with a smiling face and a wicked spirit. But if we're in tune with ourselves, that will take care of it, and we will see and, and see beyond the deception. Um, that being said, I, I'm thankful for the big ups. I want you to connect up with me, um, Lance Gerv on YouTube or LanceGerv.com, uh, whichever way. Um, we do frequent shows, and it's one big happy family. And I'm just glad to be here to share the energy. Um, that's L-A-N-C-E-S-C-U-R-V. Um, like I said, uh, we're going to be doing a lot of things, and, and I'm here to serve, and I'm here to help. I'm not the kind of platform, or we're not the kind of platform. Um, we were just looking for hits and looking to be popular. 
We're looking to get to the real nitty gritty because we live this. And our sister can tell you, um, I, I didn't make it that day, but my brother-in-law and my wife drove down from Orlando to Miami, which is about a million miles, okay, so but did. they went down to support <laughs> and attend and stay all, you know, as long as they could. And we had an event of our own here at Three Mass the next day. So um, my brother-in-law brought the camera down because we have a little studio here in my home. And like I said, this is not a profit thing for me. This is like, I have experiences, you have experiences even though we may be not connected in the same neighborhood, let's all go out on the cyber living room or front porch and talk it out and relate to each other and use this medium for more than a ratchet fight and decadent uh, material that, that is so rampant um, out here that we have to avoid because we want to vibrate on a higher level. I'm all for it. I'm trying to go higher, and I appreciate everybody's presence here. Thank you so much. You are very welcome. Yes, and I appreciate you too, Brother Lance, to the maximum respect. Words cannot even express the appreciation that I have for you taking the time out to emerge your network with my network because you don't have to do it. You really don't. But you do it's it. An honor. And it's an honor. That's the blessed part of it. It's all love. Even when you don't answer my calls, I know that Lance is going to come to you. <laughs> I'll send a text. Yep. You'll answer that text, and I'm like, okay, I'm good then. I don't need to talk to him. He just answered my text. <laughs> I know everything is everything. I, want to, tell you you little, I, want, to, I want to tell you a little quick story. It'll take 60 seconds. You know, we could use this electronic medium, this cyber medium, this Internet in very special ways. Um, there was a, the, What night was that? It was last week or a week before. I'm not sure, but I connected up our shows together. But I did have to go down no to pre mass right? to Yes, yes, exactly. Oh, we did that, that was with we down, Right, right. And we went down to uh three mass live and I had the show connected three way to, to to my conference and, and, and live stream and everything with yours and I had it on mute while I was down there videotaping the event. It was so funny mm -hmm. because when it was all over, I didn't want to bring any background noise but it was near to the end, and you called out to us because I had it on my headphones, and I was listening. I passed Kess to the phone, brother, my brother-in-law, and he went into the other uh, room and wrapped it up. Then he passed the phone back to me, and he manned the camera, and I wrapped it up. And it was, I, I love that. So no one ever I knew what was going it, on. I can't on the... Exactly. But it was recorded, and like I said, there were little, little sound issues that I have to edit and do certain things. But for the most part, that's how I do it. So you can call me. Anytime, and I'm gonna put my my numbers out there already, right? So I'm gonna put it out there now. Four zero seven five nine zero zero seven five five. You can call it anytime. I keep some weird hours. If I don't answer, always text also, because sometimes I keep my phone off when I'm at the job. But the text messages always go through. So if you want to do a show, an interview, if there's anybody interested that you want to have come talk, we will do it. And, and I'm not looking for nothing at all except to add in because. I'm not going to be here on this plane one day. I'll be on another level. We all will. And we have to build our legacies, and we have to show unconditional love. When we travel, sometimes we go to places where we say, oh, I don't know nobody there. But when you know somebody there, you know that you can come on in and you're covered. And I want to be that person, and I know that there's so many other individuals out here, our brothers and sisters, who are the same way too. We can't let this world and this lower vibration keep us from being family because that's what we are. Exactly. You know, it, it, it's a thing where, you know, like minds think alike, light attract light. So even though you're in Orlando and I'm in Miami, you know, there was a, a moment in time where we met and you trusted me, I trusted you. Your brother-in-law, your wife came down here to film in and it, everything just was everything from that moment. And the exactly. sister's coming to exactly. Orlando in February, and you seem willing and able to be a participant of that. So, you know, this we're is what we're supposed to do. This is and video yes. recorded. Yes. Hands down. If you want to come on by and get some food, my wife will prepare some food. If you're going to be there, sister, whoever's here will come on by. I'm not a kook. I'm not a creep. I'm validated, and I'm safe. I'm your bigger brother. <laughs> and, um, you know, when you connect up with us, you're covered. You know what I mean? We have a lot of people, let's be real, we have a lot of people out here who talk to talk, but they have something else in mind. 
I'm about that have work. Nothing else going check out. Yeah, I, I let exactly. the work speak for, for itself. I let the work speak for itself. I'm not in this for any other reason other than the love and the righteous love because, I, look, I'm 55 years old. I come from an era and a time where we had problems back in the day. We, had, we I like to say challenges. I don't want to say problems. It's a different vibration. Mm-hmm. But we had challenges back in the day as a people. And I remember growing up in New York City, my father and mother, especially my father, taking me around and showing me the real deal. So from single-digit ages, I had an awareness higher than most people my age. And as we went into the 70s, I saw how things were, and I had the real deal talk to me. But I remember a time when we had more love for each other. The whole community would get up and they'd watch Soul Train in the morning time before they went out on a Saturday. We'd play on records and go to parties, and there were never shootouts. We can go into somebody's house and you take one room and use it to put all the coat there and you get it when you're ready to go. And it was just a love. You had accountability. You had respect. We had real men. We don't have real men no more like we used to. We need the men Thank back, you. the sentinels of the neighborhood. Forget the police officers. They're there for a paycheck and to be the race soldiers that they are. But let's deal with the real men. I can give you the most beautiful outfit, the most beautiful suit, but if it has no thread to hold it together, you take three steps, you'll be naked. Though the men hold together the community. The women are interlocking. The sisters are interlocking. They hold together the community. See, we all have a very important yes. role. You see the faceplate exactly. of the watch. You see the second hand, the hour hand, and the minute hand. But that doesn't tell the whole story. Behind that faceplate, there's millions of gears that are working precisely to tell you that right time. We've been manipulated and deceived and messed with. And the seeds that were planted years ago are coming now, coming spring and forth. All I say is that we've got to change that trajectory so that five and ten years from now, we're not bringing bad fruit. It's bad enough that we were strange fruit, but now in 2019 almost, we're almost overwhelmingly bad fruit. We're GMO people. We're not what we used to be and should be. So somebody's got to make the effort and take a chance. And I'll tell you so, I've been screwed over a couple times by people well wishing, but I'm not going to allow it to stop me from showing love to the people who are worth it. I'll take that for the game. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And you see we have the um, Brother Kwame on the, the airways right now, and he's going. He's coming to Orlando the last Saturday of January. He's going to the Three Mass uh, Marketplace event. And um, this, like I said, the sister's coming in February on the 24th, and I'll be trying with her. And maybe me and Kwame can talk, and I may try it with him on the fourth Saturday of January. So just the mere fact knowing that we have somebody that could receive us is a blessing to know that, you know, when I get there, I know I can go there and rest my head and get some good food and get a good shower and be on my way. And I give thanks to you, Lance, for definitely. even opening up that opportunity for that because it, it really takes – a love light person to say stuff like that because a lot of people is very personal. They're very individual. They're very like selfish in a sense, you know. So just to hear right. you, I, oh, I know what really, you mean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You and know, I want to give just, my shades to the uh, that. sister that was there. The other sister that was there, she was talking about you know shedding all that uh, negative energy. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, she had me going looking for my feather. <laughs> <laughs> she did. Because <laughs> she mentioned it. I was like, let me go find my feather. <laughs> well, that's a good oh, yeah. thing. It reminded you. <laughs> we had to keep that energy clear and I mean, just like the brother was saying, we are not the people that we once were. And those of us who remember that, we just have to hold on to it and make sure that we don't let others forget as well because it really is uh, it's a, it's a really special time we're in. We're seeing a lot of people who are waking up, like pe- new people who are – really, really wake it up and, you know, maybe the Black Panther right. thing, I don't know what it was, but we did see a, a surge in the last year or so. Um, but the people, we don't really have things set up for them. 
we don't have churches and stuff, alternative temples for them to come to, not the way that they expected. And um, mm-hmm. that's a problem. <laughs> you know, it's 2018. It is. It's our you problem. That's right. To be a little bit more situated. You know, we got corner stores selling all kind of stuff on every corner in our neighborhood, but yet we don't have places for our people to go and celebrate ourselves and, you know, be immersed in our culture. And I'm telling you, if we just had a place we could go and just hear some drumming once a week, that's healing. That's right. <laughs> that is very that's healing for right. a lot of us. The power of the drum. Spirit. Yeah, that's why they took it away from us at a time. So, you know, that, but that is our fault. I mean. That was our it, communication it, as well. Yeah, and nobody else is going to do that for us. We have to do it for ourselves, but we have to support those of us who are wanting to do it. You know, I'm, I'm working to build a temple, but I feel like I'm doing it by myself, you know, and nobody else really does that. <laughs> and I'm a woman, so <laughs> it's um, it's quite an interesting um, journey. Uh, I'm thankful, very thankful, but I would look forward to seeing the shift in the people so that we can, those of us who are working to build, um, really can be supported because right now the support is going elsewhere. You know, I had to go fund me up to build a, a retreat center for five years and I watched as other people, you know, big men who spoke big game <laughs> got thousands and <laughs> hundreds of thousands of people uh, of money from people and did not even come forth with any of the work that it's they spoke of. I know. No <laughs> action. Know it's pure chat. So, uh-huh. you know, it's, it's, it's really interesting but um, but we still continue because we do have ones like you all who are sincere and maintaining, you know, what you can in your area to hold that light and to keep that fire and to keep the knowledge and the culture, you know, going. And that is a part of our healing. We can't let it, can't let the fire go out. We have to keep it going. Mm-hmm. That's right. Have to keep the fire burning. That's true, sis. That's true. No matter what obstacles come in the way, we still have to just keep moving forward, you know, because the right ones will, and eventually the right ones are going to attract each other. We're going to come together like a glue. That nucleus is going to form itself. Whether we want it to happen or not, but it's like how we're having this conversation and all of us is on the same synchronization right now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's just how it is, you know. And like you said, a lot of people come with a lot of talk and no action. I was telling you that last day, what, two weeks ago, right, Brother Lance, about the talking and no action. I'm just tired of the talking. It's time for us to do it. Lance is a doer. I know that already. That's why he's on the airwaves. If he wasn't a doer, he wouldn't be here. Mm-hmm. He's a doer. All of us are doers. That's why we're here and we're linking together, you know, the elder Kwame just told me a little earlier today how he was just in Orlando for the fourth Saturday of every month. Three Mass has something going on up there in Orlando, you know. So the next time he comes on the fourth Saturday of January, most likely I should be there too. I would like to to see him link up with Landscurf Media to make sure that he's oh, you know definitely. can know he could go somewhere and sleep for a few hours before he get on the road to come back down to Miami. You don't have to just leave three masks and go to the bus station and get on the bus and go back to Miami. We would like to know that he's taken exactly. care of in that way because he was responsible for your wife and Keston coming down here to see Enfidishi. He was a sponsor <laughs> for Enfidishi. You get what I'm trying to say? So we see have that? to, right, right. you know, the network. that give it's and take network. type of this vibration must go internet. on, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. See, we see, we had the internet before the internet came to be, in each other, that connection to each other. <laughs> so, so we are using this now to reconnect to each other. But you see how the connection goes. So when we have that underlying right. love and commitment and integrity, 
It's something that goes beyond. They can shut the internet down then, and we're good because we have each other. It's really about the people. We already know. The real people. That's, we already know who to reach out to. I am so thankful that I was able to <laughs> see you pop up online because I was, I was feeling a certain sort of way, you know, and uh, I think it was for good reasons that I saw you pop up and I needed to hear, you know, the sister from Kansas City, the other sister that you have on, I needed to hear you, sister and the guest and the brother. Yes, the guest. The guest is, is very powerful, you know, and I always try to have powerful, knowledgeable people come on so when who's ever listening, they can always take from it, whether they like to hear it or not, but they know that they listen to Real Radio Talk and they got something out of it. So I always try to have the right people on so people could feel whole again and we can feel like, yeah, we don't have to give up. There's some sense of hope. And let me tell you something. Like I said, if it wasn't for Instagram, I would not have known of her. So that type of social media, in a positive way, I could support. So give thanks to Instagram for me meeting this sister because the impress is very powerful. I felt her light. That's why I reached out to her, invited her on the on the radio. And, you know, of course we're going to do things after this. There's no doubt about it. There's no question about it. You know, and I'm happy that everyone that's on the phone right now, that's on the line right now, are able to hear um, Akusa Ayabi. And I hope I said it right. Is it Ayabi, Akusa Ayabi? I don't know. Maybe she's probably walked away from the phone. But yes, I hope I'm saying her name right. But yeah, just the mere fact that she could give us. A resume. She's giving us her personal resume, her personal feedback on mm-hmm. my guest. You know, she knows her more than I know her, and I'm glad that she's able to say that because it just, you know, it, it, it just confirms what I already knew anyway. You know, what I'm saying any damn way. <laughs> it just confirms <laughs> that. But <laughs> just, you know, just saying that now we have somebody else that's just confirming more and more. So it's all good. You know, I don't have a problem putting my time and energy into her at all. It's well gratified. And trust me, every other Sunday, if she wants to be on Real Radio Talk, she's welcome. It's open to her. It's here. She's welcome, you know. And I'm sure Brother Lance don't have a problem connecting his network to my network when she's on, if he's available either. You know what I'm saying? So it's just all good. I look forward to it. Thank you so much. I would definitely on on the nights that I am available. I would definitely love to take you up on that opportunity. And we are looking forward to coming to Florida for this class. We're going to be in Orlando, (laughs) February 24th. For everyone who is listening, oh, I'll be there, man. I'll be there. I'll be there, brother Lance. I'll be there, my sister. Yes, Kajara, don't worry, we, I'm there. <laughs> I'm already there and I'm not there yet, but I'm there. <laughs> don't even worry, I'm there. Well, tell your friends Good and energy, family you. and everyone, it's time for us to heal ourselves. We have a lot of work to do. The healing process does not happen overnight, but the class will give you some tools that you can use to help yourself. And it doesn't cost you a lot. You know, we're going to make sure everyone leaves with their own spiritual bath to help you clear your aura, and you will get so much more, so many things about the aura, the chakras, and more. So make sure you visit us online. Are you doing spiritual baths? Yeah, and we'll make a spiritual bath right there at the class. We're going to do personal assessments for people. So if anybody has any issues... An actual bath. We're going to make a spiritual bath right then and there. A traditional. So you're going to have a bathtub with water. We're just going to put it in a bowl and put the herbs and pray over it, and then everyone can take some of it home and they'll use it in their own bathtub. (laughs) Okay, I got you. I got you. Okay, I see. 
so we're making. But you can do so an actual spiritual bath with someone as they in the bathtub. Yes, I am a priestess, and I can do a spiritual bath if someone needs that. And if someone okay. does want some work while I'm in Florida, all you have to do is send me an email at Raseki Temple at gmail dot com. And we will make an appointment for you, and I will see, you know, how we can accommodate you. Um, We do offer several services. I do readings, consultations, personal clearings, Mm -hmm. like spiritual clearings, um, beast rituals, and, of course, the comedic Reiki, which includes sound therapy and crystal therapy. It's a real beautiful session. So... uh, just make sure to visit us at RaseckiHealing.com, and that site has all the classes, the retreats, and other services that we offer. And for our books and other products, you can go to RaseckiStore.com. Okay. My sister, can I rewind this program? <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's definitely going to be saved in the archive. So Okay, you thank you, do... because I'm not going to be able to keep <laughs> up with all of that. <laughs> all you need to do is just go to blogtalkradio.com um, and yeah, blogtalkradio.com forward slash real radio talk. And you get Cyber Rocket Car. Once you start typing in blogtalkradio.com forward slash real radio, it's going to pull up. And then you just click I'm on already, it. I'm already on it. To... Oh, okay. Yeah, so once this ends, tomorrow you can listen to it again, and you can share it. You can listen to it next week, next month, next year, however you want to do it. Well, there's some information that I didn't get a chance to write down, so. <laughs> okay, yes. Yeah. So you can always go back and, and get it if you want. Or you can ask again because we, we, we yeah. have time, and you can get it now. Oh you. no, that's okay. I I will uh uh I'm like I said I'm on the program now. So uh, once it's over, I'll just you know go backwards and um get the information. Okay, no problem. So brother and, Kwame, and what I want to do is cap- oh sorry, go ahead, man. No, no, I was just going to say in the comment section below on this program, I want to drop a few links leading back to you know what we do and. I want to connect up with everybody here who's here live, um, if we're not already, and whoever else hears it and know that we're in Orlando, Florida, and, you know, we're open to help out any which way when you all come here, definitely. But the links will be there in a few seconds. Thank you. Oh, that's just, you're making me want to subliminally cry. It was strict. Don't start. I'll start Instagram crying, just, too. <laughs> this is what we're supposed to be doing You know what I'm saying This is really how it should be Exactly. It really should be this way I like that you know. And I'm definitely looking forward to um, The fourth Saturday of next month And the 24th For the sister in Orlando Lance mark that on your calendar Make sure you keep that day open Already did. <laughs> So we can just show Three masks what it is And how it's supposed to be done <laughs> Oh, yeah. Exactly. We well, have to show them that unity. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say I look forward to meeting you all. It's been such a pleasure to speak with you all tonight. And we are ready to bring some healing energy to Florida. So thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to share with your listeners. Yes, I have some uh, questions for you too. When I get to your website, and um, the guest has already got me started on something that um, I need some <laughs> healing for my eyes. So, <laughs> okay, well, I do offer consultations, so you can definitely take a look at the website, and I'd be more than happy to work with you and give you whatever you know, serve you whatever way I can. Okay, I appreciate it. No problem. Much gratitude. <laughs> oh, that's just so special, you know. It's just so beautiful. <laughs> it is so beautiful. 
I don't know, Brother Kwame, would you like to say something? 573-820. Well, the only thing I would like to say is uh, I hadn't heard of the sister before, but I'm glad that I heard of her today. She has uh, (laughs) exposed me to a lot of information I didn't have before, and I look forward to seeing her in, in Florida sometime soon. Right. So what we're going to do is when we hang up from this radio show, I don't know if Lance have anything to do after we hang up or if the sister have anything to do, but we wanted to, me, Kwame, Lance, and Sister Kajara, we can have a conversation so we can kind of um, get things set for the 24th ride because we would like for you to come to Miami for like um, the 23rd, 22nd, like that. And then from there we you go to yeah. we go to my to um Orlando, and you do your thing in Orlando. With Lance Skirt will be there, of course, in the house. And then from there you can go back to um, Atlanta with a great story to tell. So we wanted to basically <laughs> speak after that, after the radio show, on those type of things. So then that way, um, Brother Kwame could reach out to his connections on as far as a location to have this event hosted and get the flyers going and all those different things. But so that's what we were talking about before we started the radio program. So we just decided yeah, since we're work. all online already, we can just continue the conversation once we get off the air, you know? So we can keep the, the vibe going, you know? Keep the energy flowing. That's fine exactly. with me. Okay. Is that okay with you too, Brother Lance? Because I don't know if you oh, have yeah. to. I'm 100 percent in. You know, I know sometimes you have to call other people and stuff like that. You know, I don't know. No, I'm good. I'm just straightening up a little bit, so I'll still be talking on the phone and on mute, but I'll be right there and I'll be unmuting myself and talking. I just got a whole lot of wires, a lot of wires to plug in and things to test out and whatever, and free me up because tomorrow I'm going to uh, Jacksonville which is only like mm-hmm. a two-hour ride, but I'm going to go up there and we're going to do some, some what I call walkumentaries. And we're going to walk through mm-hmm. the streets of Jacksonville and we have some people lined up to talk to. And that'll be on the YouTube channel probably about that night, tomorrow night. Um, I probably will swing by swing mass, uh, three mass after that, mm-hmm. you know, for their Poetic Mondays. And I'll record that and then come on in again. So I got a, I, I got a energetic day tomorrow. So, and while I drive to Jacksonville, I'm open to talk to anybody that wants to get on a, on a recorded conversation that I'll upload to YouTube because I don't have any dead space. If I'm driving for two hours, I'm talking to somebody that's going to be recorded on my conference line, and um, I can mm-hmm. upload that as a show too on the way up and on the way back down. So I got four hours with that. So it's good. You know, I love it. I love multitasking. It's a quiet, relatively quiet compared to New York City, even though Orlando is getting a little crazy too. But um, I like to keep my hands moving. I like to be able to say to myself at the end of the day that, listen, this is what I got done. And when it's time to rest, yes, I rest. But I like to always move forward with something. If it's not a show, artwork, because I'm an artist, graphics, something, you know, reaching out, making connections, or even sharing my Rolodex, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So I, I love that. I love to see this. So you're breathing life into me because I was a little drained earlier. There were little negative things coming at me, you know, and this kind of helped okay. out. And also, I've been sweeping my head, too, and pushing away all the evil spirits also while we did the show. So I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad that we, I'm glad that the sister and everybody that was on the line were able to push away those evil spirits because I'm <laughs> definitely ready to trample down evil, you know? <laughs> because that's what evil is about, to be trampled down. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's right, that's right. That was Pure funny. assault and batteries up in here on on, on that level. I'm kicking spirit. Yeah, that you know was what I mean? funny. This negative. <laughs> well, well, on that note, this is Gaia. I'm going to uh, let you all finish it up. And uh, okay, no I'm, I'll go back and rewind this program so that I can get some information. And uh, I will try to, unlike the brother says, you know, he'll try to hook up with everybody that was online or, or called in or whatever. And I will greatly um, 
appreciate him doing that for me. So. I'm okay, trying to stay out of my, my computer room because it's turned up in there. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of loud. So I'm trying to stay out of there. <laughs> <laughs> I know you'll get some feedback. So Right. Well, I appreciate you calling in. You know, it's always good to have people supporting and sharing their, their ideas and, you know, just knowing that we're here and to bring that real radio talk to the good people. And thank you for calling in. Thank you and for I'm having And I'm sure you're going to get the information you need. I'm sure I will. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm like giggly right now. I'm happy. <laughs> oh, we all are happy. We have so much to look forward to. I mean, even though it's a lot of work, it's 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 a labor of love, and it's healing while you work. Isn't that something that when you even go out in your garden and put your hands in the dirt, it's healing, you know? And and it's just that connection to the earth, to each other, to the universe, to the Creator. Um, it's just a wonderful thing. This society has to do and have us against each other. Don't get me started <laughs> ahead, because <laughs> if it was warm, I'd be out there in the dirt right now. So. Oh, me too. Me too. <laughs> I'd be out there in well, the sun and the dirt. Well, you know, we're here in Florida, so we got the warmth already. Right. And I'm so hating on you for that one. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't say I am. <laughs> Well, I'm going to get off the line and and let you all uh, finish up. Okay. And once again, uh, I appreciate all the information, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to get back online with you all again soon. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, peace and love. I'll send you the message when we're back on again. No worries. I know. I'll see it. (laughs) Okay. Love and gratitude to you. Yes, peace and love to you all. Good night. Thank you. Good night. You're welcome. Yeah, so um Brother Kwame, this is this is Lynn Scurve Media. His wife is the one I was with, Brother Keston, just to give you an idea of who he is. Yes, yes, I heard I heard you, you describe him earlier. You know, okay. sorry that he wasn't there, but he was there in spirit, which is just as good. Right. <laughs> so anytime you go into the Orlando area to any type of three mask event, you have to contact Lance, so that way somebody could be yes. there to receive you. Yeah, and you could take my number and stuff and know my particulars and everything else is online. Like I got a gazillion stuff out there, but directly to me. You can you can call me direct, you know, and oh, not a problem. If it's not me, it'll be Brother problem. Keston, you know. And um, you met Either Keston way, already. You met my wife already. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm glad they met you. You, you know? know. And this Saturday, I didn't have a no, chance to make it there. because um. Right, right, right. I didn't have a chance to make it yesterday. I was o- not overwhelmed, but I had to get a lot of things out of the way because we had a situation where our main drain backed up. And, you know, that's a very uh, <laughs> sugar, honey, iced tea situation. So we had to take care of that. Yeah. And um, like I said, there will be unexpected things that pop up, but at least that, you, you know, I'll, I'll always stick it to it. You know, just, just produce, 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 keep things going, keep the networking going. So when you have that unexpected day when you can't attend to that, then, um, you know, you're covered. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So even on this end, I'm going to, um, since the main show is over and we're talking, and I'm, I was recording the conversation, you know, the whole show, I'm going to stop the recording. This call is being recorded. Oh, I already did. <laughs> call recording off. Yeah. 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 That's true. Now, I have a question for the sister. What do we need to do to bring you down to Miami before you go to Orlando? 
Uh, well, I need to have a location. Um, I would like to get about ten students, um, but if I can get seven, I would come. But I would need to have a space um, that will hold about seven people, seven to ten, and have a table and chairs, and basically that's all I need. Um, and then, of course, some help with promotions because I have tried to plan classes there in the past, but I just don't have a strong enough network in Florida, so it just never happened before. Okay. Well, I think we can do that. I have a lot of connections here, and I can reach out to all the people who I know, and we can do some videos, we can do some interviews. And let me ask you, you did say... You are in Georgia. You are in Atlanta, correct? Yes. Okay. Well, I got a free week um, from the plantation. That's not referred to the job, but I have a free week from the from the job, and from the nineteenth <laughs> to the twenty seventh, and that whole week, you know, my, my wife is still gonna be working, so I'm pretty much be at the house and just whatever, and I say, ah, I gotta do something. So I gotta drive somewhere. I don't need to drive like a million miles away, but I know. I need something to do, so I got to justify my time off more so when I have more days off, you know, so maybe I can come up there uh-huh. for an hour or two and just um, at least have a sit-down interview where people can see you, you can bring whoever you want, you can designate, it could be on the street corner, it could be a McDonald's, it could be in a hall, it doesn't have to be, it could be just a 15-minute thing, it doesn't matter. I'm probably going to come that way anyway, and I really want to line up a bunch of people that I can interview and just talk to and put them up on YouTube. That's one of my things that I like to do, um, especially if you have something lined up. So within that week, you know, if you're available or free, you know, it doesn't have to be a big thing. You can be, hey, meet me here, meet me there. You know, I put the wireless mic on you and, you know, you wear your outfit or whatever and we have a good background and, and we just talk for a little bit. And I use that to promote that people can see you they see us next to each other oh, man, you know, she's down with Lance. Man, it becomes real to a lot of people. Sometimes they hear just a voice, but when they see, it's even more convincing because I've I, I've learned that even since, like, with my brother-in-law and, and me doing these shows, because I've been doing them for a, a long time, and a little bit about me, I'm a political illustrator that got into writing about my illustrations because I received so many emails asking me, how did I get these ideas? And, you know, so... That interaction had people asking me, well, we like the way you write also. Could, could you answer back, you know, this YouTube video? So I wrote about it. So they're like, no, 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 no. You know, do a video. And I'm like, back in those days, it's like, man, that's the kids. I don't want to be bothered with that. So after a while, I saw the evolution of it. I got into YouTube and I got into live streams. So I'm doing all these different things. So that's what got me into this. And I see the value of it to help other people. And um, I just enjoy doing it. So I took one of the bedrooms in my house and turned it into a podcast in the studio with all the equipment there and all the different things. And um, it, it's it's more than a hobby for me. It's, it's it's a it's a lifeline, you know, because many people at my age, which I don't think I'm ancient, but they're like, oh man, I gotta find something to do. They get in trouble. They do all these different things. No, 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 no. But this is something that connects me with the world. It's fascinating because I remember back at a time when we didn't have anything like this. You better get that long distance call three o'clock in the morning lick a stamp and mail something. Now everything's instantaneous, so we, didn't, we don't have any excuses of people to not help to heal each other up. But could you imagine Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Marcus Garvey, anybody from back in them days, they didn't have instant messaging. They didn't have email. They didn't have smartphones, but they got so much done. So we have no excuse at this particular point in time to not make a history and tell our own stories and leave a legacy and information to help other people. You know, so it's nothing for me to drive here, drive there, and, and bring my camera and vibe and then put it up and then we share things. And whoever knows me gets to know anybody else. And if we all do that, we're set. It's the unity first, you know? Well, that would be wonderful. I, so <laughs> I am available during that time. I will be in town um, for, mm-hmm. for the most part so we can set a time right. to meet do the interview. I would yeah. love that. And it can be done anywhere. No pressure, no no nothing. Wherever we, you, you decide wherever that is, 
You decide how long it could be. If you want to sit and talk for an hour, uh, 15 minutes, five minutes, three hours, doesn't matter to me. You know, just just pour your heart out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that. <laughs> yeah, yep. that would be good though. I would love that. Well, this is what the people need to hear. You know, that's definitely what they need to hear. And and when they see that, they will definitely come out. I'll be a quick and fool. I'll be I'll be I'll be pushing that interview, making people share it, <laughs> fucking them. You know, right. as well as getting out in person and, 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 and pushing certain things. And we do an event here, um, even if I have to come up, well, yeah, it, it, the third Saturday, every month we do an event, my brother-in-law and I, at Three Masks also, the Road to Restoration. We speak about, you know, issues for oh, people. Oh, it's the third Saturday. I keep saying four. Health, yeah, yeah, the third. Yeah, the third. So that particular yeah, so I'm going to be busy that week that way, but every other time, trust me, I'll, I'll come up there, and I probably will shoot down in Miami also, you know, and, and do some things, you know, because I, yeah, I have you everything just let, the let way I want Kwame it know, And we can get things set up, you know what I mean, Kwame? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> like you just let us know <laughs> when you want to come through, Brother Lance, and, it, and we can just have it as yes. all established, you know what I'm saying? We right, could be exactly, all at the Ethiopian exactly. restaurant. We could be all at the Ethiopian right, restaurant be a recording. Backdrop. You know? Yeah, exactly. 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 And I bring my stuff and it'll be it'll be fabulous. And see the thing is now, you know, we I'm not saying anybody here, but most of us out in the world don't realize that we are to tell our own stories. We are to record our own history to leave it for those behind us. And those who are here now, we have to do that because when you look back at the so-called civil rights movement, you know, we saw what happened, but that was minuscule because that was the cameras of somebody else who happened to be there. They didn't have smartphones back then. Could you imagine if right. we would see if we had it? Not that we're going to focus on just the negative, but also the unity that we had to get mm-hmm. things done. You know, that would be more mm-hmm. inspirational. So for the little that we see, which seems like a whole lot, could you imagine? So now we, we have to, especially on a righteous level, you know, put good stuff out there. And that's what I'm really into because when you look at it, you know, we, we'll, we'll see a, a ratchet fight or some, you know, the ignorant amongst us and say, ah, I'm not going to watch that. Right. But that's recorded. That's going right. to project into the future. The, the, you know, folks are going to try uh-huh. to paint us a certain way by the other stuff that they put out there. And we've got to come with some good stuff and, and break it down. You know, even yeah. if it affects one person, look, it out. When, 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 when they look back in history, and we didn't have TVs back then in the 1800s or 1700s, they had newspapers. They always look at the political illustrations of what was said that wasn't politically correct to get, the, get a feel of the pulse of what people were saying. See? So mm-hmm. they go to those things. Let me tell you something. CNN, w, uh, 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 Fox, you know, yeah, Fox, all of them. They're all owned by the same people anyway. The one you was on? <laughs> oh, yeah, Dr. Drew Show. Yeah, yeah, that little bum. But anyway. <laughs> with, with, with those <laughs> that was CNN or Fox News? So, no, that was CNN, but it was headline news. But, you know, CNN owned headline news, and it was their producers that reached out to me when that incident happened. Um, and for those who don't know about it, um, I don't know if you remember this brother down in uh, – Baton Rouge, Louisiana, who killed three cops two years ago, two two and a half years ago. His, his name was Cosmo and Gavin Long, actually. But his, you know, his government name was Gavin Long, but his, his name was Cosmo. And he was an ex-Marine and, you know, vegan and got into shape and had, wrote these books on spirituality for black people and was an alpha male, was a black alpha male. And, you know, he we, we, he reached out to me to do a show, and we did the show. And we had been talking about a year before then. He reached out and said, hey, I like what you're doing online, man. We got to do a show. He called me. He was in Africa. He had got out of the military, and he was going all through the motherland and all over the world and collecting up information and studying under the masters. And then he came back, and he, he wrote these three books. And I have two of them. I got to get the third one because his mother reached out to me. Um, so we did the interview, and about six weeks later, this is what happened. Allegedly, he killed three cops. 
I don't know. I can't say I wasn't there. I'm not covering up for the brother. They got photos and different things like that. But if you really knew him like I knew him, unless they were coming to him, you know, but he was ready to do whatever he had to do. He was a he's a real trooper. But the thing is, when uh, I was on the Dr. Drew show and they got me on there, they promised me that I'd be able to speak on all levels of his existence from what I knew him to be. I had one of the most beautiful conversations with him on right. spirituality and on life, um, and, and I'm, I, w- I would never crap on him just to get on a show. And I told him that, and they were okay with that. But, you know, the devils always have these little tricks that they have up their sleeves. So when I – and let me tell you, when that happened, exactly, it had just happened, and I was doing a live show with somebody who was down in Baton Rouge at the time. She was an author, the playwright, and she was on the phone coming home, and she said, Lance, after the show was over, we were still on the phone, she said, Lance, all of these cop cars in different counties and federal this and this, and this something really bad happened. I'm like, man, I could imagine what it is. So I went on CNN and saw what it was, but I knew him as Cosmo and not Gavin Long. So I'm like, well, hey, let's do a live stream on that. Not that we should do reporters, but let's just talk about, because the other one happened before in Texas, right? Similar incident with a guy who was in the Army, black man. So we did, and I did it not knowing it was him. All of a sudden, everybody started calling and texting. CNN, Washington Post, uh, MSNBC, The Daily News, Miami Herald, I mean BBC. What the heck is my phone blowing up? So I picked the phone up, and it was a guy who said, Lance Gilman. I said, yeah. You know, this is Lance, and I'm tentative, you know. He said, do you know why we're calling you? I said, no, I have no idea. Well, you're connected to the man who killed the three cops in Baton Rouge. I said, well, no, I'm not. I said, no, I'm not. Don't put that on me. So um, he told me, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I know him. He's my buddy. And he said, we'd like to talk to you. So from that Sunday, and I had that week off, from that Sunday to the next Tuesday afternoon, I did not sleep. It was media after media after media, and I did not want them to fill in the blanks. So I said, you know what? I meditated on it, and I said, you know what? I'm going to set the record straight and tell. But they still chopped up what I said. So when CNN reached out to me, and I told them, I said, listen, you know, they said, we're going to give you five minutes, which is like forever as far as being on prime time. And I said, I have Skype here. I have my own studio. We'll get on that way. And you ask me the questions, we'll talk. But what I did the night before, I did a live stream about Cosmo, and the media did not like it when they heard it. So Dr. Jew, you know, in his nasal voice is like, well, what, what did he mean by uh, 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 he's a freedom fighter? And they did not, did not like the answer. So after about 90 seconds, they cut me off. But it's on my YouTube channel, the way it was broadcast. They took that down. It took everything. It wouldn't let me get it. I couldn't find it. But I snooped around and downloaded it, and they had it where you can't download it. They don't want you to get stuff out. So when they really investigated me, like, oh, God, this guy's a radical guy also. You know what I mean? So we can't give him no play. And you'll see on my site, you'll see some things in Lanceburg.com, the artwork and everything. Everything's there. And um, I did a scathing piece on those who claim our legacy as far as holding those Jews. And um, let me shut up because I can go on forever. I've been through a lot. I've been monitored by different uh, factions at different times because he was the only so-called controversial person I've talked to. Many have come to me underground, you know, undercover. We've talked and put their stories out there. When Bill O'Reilly had the problem with the guy who stepped on the flag in Georgia, the young man, uh, uh, um, what is his name? I keep forgetting. Um, And it went viral. They said that they found the gun that he had, and it wasn't true. They didn't like what he was saying so so beautifully about America and how America treats the black man. So he had to run. I didn't know he followed what I do. He called me and wanted to do an interview. We did it that night for four hours and put it up. So I'm looked at. You know what I mean? And I can tell you countless other things. So that's why on the ground I put the work in. It's not about me. Uh, you know, I can I do enough videos talking about different things, but it's to help out people because we don't know. We have to use this a, a platform that is very powerful and, and uses it in a way to help our brothers and sisters. And I will shut up on that. <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, that was a mouthful anyway, so, you yeah. know. And one day I'll sit down and talk to you. Just bring a lot of tape to hold your ears up because I took your ears off. Mm-hmm. You got a lot of good information to share. People need to hear these stories. Yes, 
Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And again, you know, there's a choice that you have to make. There's a lot of people out there who they don't want to put themselves in the firing line, but the powers that be know that I'm all in. And like I said, I'm not some paranoid guy because I used to work in law enforcement down here when I first moved down here in Florida only for the fact that it was a job. But I left it after four years, and they didn't like that about me. I went through stuff in there where they saw my philosophies, my ideologies. The people up top, they'll put black faces in supervisory positions, but the Klan and the white supremacist groups down here in Florida are alive and well and thriving. And that I know because I've had some who reach out to me, not because they love me, but when they see that you are influential in a certain way, they'll reach out to you. And, and they will show you a certain amount of respect in your face. But I know how they feel, you know. And so it, it's really a rough thing out here because their job has gotten easier because of many of us don't show any unity and, 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 and see each other as human beings and need to reach out to each other. So we made it easy for them. The Klan can retire now and sit back and watch us do their job. You understand? Um, I had been under investigation when I was in corrections. And it all started off because they saw my old website and the type of art that I drew. Because I do very detailed black and white sketches dealing with the social issues of black people. And if you look at most major periodicals, they always have uh, uh, either cartoons or, you know, if you look at a Republican newspaper, everything there. And most people just say, oh, it's a newspaper. But it's slanted to tell the news in a Republican way or a Democratic way. And I'm not a pop political guy. I don't believe in the system that way. But it's propaganda. But there's nobody out there that has our own righteous propaganda to, to steer our minds in a certain way in a unified fashion. And that's a very slick way of doing it. You go to China, you go to certain places in the Middle East, and the leaders there will have pictures of themselves and things pushing an agenda. But we don't do that. And the platforms that we have, they're owned by other people, and we can't do certain things. So I'm a renegade. You see, I'll say what I say. I don't censor anybody. I do what I do. But I understand the power of the media. And one person can create a tsunami that's so powerful collectively with other people when you bring information, and they can't stop you. They have shut down my ability to live stream on YouTube. They've shut down the monetization, which I was only getting about 100 bucks for the videos anyway. You know what I mean? Even though I have over 2,000 600 videos up and counting. The show today will be one. And as we talked, I uploaded what I did earlier to the conversation with another young lady from Texas. So, you know, you just keep throwing punches. Every punch is not going to knock the opponent out. Every punch may not land, but you have to have a spirit where you're going to keep chopping this tree until it comes down. So that's what I do as far as my part, and I let the work speak for itself. But it's in an ego-free manner. I'm not looking for anything for myself. I'm exactly. glad to be alive with all the minefields that are out here for me as a black man. I've been beat by 11 cops. I've been, you know, put on investigations and, and, and followed down here. But when, and when, when I was out of correction, because I got, actually got fired from corrections for feeding an inmate, I hate to use that word, an extra tray or two of food. That's all they can find on me, right? But... Months prior, there was an FBI investigation in that same jail with people that I worked with next to me, and I never came up in anything because I'm clean. But they were so angry up top of my ideology and my proximity to what they would call an inmate, which are my own black brothers. I never had a problem inside there. They loved when I worked in a certain area. They did not like that. If you have these ideologies and you're not a cool we can't have this righteously pro-black militant guy in I don't hate anybody, but I'm going to look out for my own. You know what I mean? But just let me pause for a second. I'll be back. This is my wife calling to me. I'll be right back. Yes, I completely understand. If you're not cooning, so, they don't want nothing to do with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... I want to get back to me about the um, the location, and we can as soon as we get that, then we could confirm the date and go ahead and 
get it started with the advertising and whatnot. Yeah, because it would be nice to have you come down on, um, let's say, you're going to do the 24th for Orlando, of course. So if you can be in Miami, like the 22nd, 23rd, and then get to Orlando before the 24th, we would like to, to host you in that manner because me and Kwame was already discussing that. We just needed to talk to you about it to see if you'll be with it or not. Wonderful, wonderful. Hopefully before the week is out, we can get back with you with some definite location and time and all like that there. All right. Well, the sister has my uh, number, and you are welcome to pass her along and whatever else you do to get it going. If you all have any questions about anything, just let me know. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, we will do. And I would definitely, um, if the brother wants to come up here to make the video, I wish that as well. Okay. Oh, yes. Yes, I'm We'll back. be there for yes, that to happen. Don't worry. <laughs> yes. yes All right. Wonderful. Well, thank you again for the opportunity. And I'm definitely looking forward to meeting everybody and working with you all. And we're going to light up Florida a bit. <laughs> right. Yes, and exactly. we're, looking, we're looking forward to having you, sis. Thank you for saying it that way. Lighten up Florida, that's right. Because that's yes. what we're trying to do. Wonderful. Well, we are in the line there, so that feels real good. I'm glad you all have a beautiful night. You all have any other questions or anything like that? Oh, no. Trust me, when we get the cameras rolling, I have a lot of questions for you. (laughs) Right. We'll save the best for last. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And I thank you again, everyone here. Thank you so much. I'm going to sign off. I got to make a couple calls and do a few things. And um, I got to call back my wife and whatnot. Everything is cool. But um, this is a wonderful way to end this year and begin another. And I thank you all for that and the energy. Yes, for sure. I agree. Thank you for being here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right. Have a good evening. Yes, yes. Love and gratitude. Thank you. <laughs>